Okay, looks good. All right. So our second talk will be by Alberto Mora from Madrid, and he will tell us about how gravity can emerge. Please. So uh, hi everyone. Uh, let me uh, first thank the Marcus, uh, Ling, and Fabian for giving me the chance to speak here today and present some recent work that we've done in collaboration with uh, my supervisor Luis Ibanez and also with with Alvaro Arraez. And uh, the, the topic of the talk. Uh, despite the perhaps ambiguous uh, title, will be uh, the emergence proposal in quantum gravity, which is a uh, very intriguing and, and recent idea within the Swamland, Swamland context, which tries to address some of the, um, of the perhaps microscopic rationality of some Swamland conjectures. But I will elaborate more uh, uh, about this later on in the talk. And uh, this talk will be mainly based on these two papers that we put on the archives. Um, like uh, by the end of last year and the beginning of this one. But uh, to be honest, I will only have time to discuss the ideas um, that, uh, that we touch in this, in this special. Um, but let me, let me first give you a couple of introductory remarks so to make sure that we are all on the same page. So one could say that, that we currently live in this, this Trump era, right? And mean that the, in contrast to, to the common belief 20 or 30 years ago, we now understand that not every effective field theory that we may think of can actually arise from quantum gravity or from the string theory construction. And the way in which we characterize this is through the, the Swamlan conjectures, in the, such as the weak gravity conjecture, the, the distance conjecture, no, no global symmetries, and so on and so forth. So roughly speaking, the picture is as I tried to, to depict here. So uh, every time one wants to, to study its favorite uh, some, uh, effective field theory, one has to make sure that, the, 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 that they are safe from the dangers of the, of the Swamland criteria. And despite the, the, the many um, you know, heuristic motivations and, and evidence gathered in favor of, of all these, these conjectures, either coming from holography or string theory constructions, one may argue that the, we are still lacking perhaps for some of them, at least the ones that maybe uh, lie at its core, some sort of microscopic rationale of why, why are these constraints, uh, why, why should they, they, they be satisfied in every effective field theorization for quantum graph? And this is precisely where the emergence proposal, uh, or the gap that the emergence proposal tries to, to fill in. But before telling you how it does, does this, I will try to, well, briefly, I'll try to build uh, the intuition upon the idea surrounding this, this, this interesting uh, conjecture or proposal by discussing several uh, simple examples that we are all, all familiar with and, and will uh, first in quantum field theory and then in, in quantum gravity. So in, as, as we all know, uh, in quantum field theory, every time we have a very massive uh, degree of freedom well, and we, we don't care about each dynamics, so or we just uh, have uh, not powerful enough experiments to prove that, that energy scales, what we can do is to integrate it out, uh, performing the, the, the path integral, and that leaves us with just a low energy effective field theory describing the remaining uh, degrees of freedom. So for example, if, if one thinks about a simple Yukawa theory describing the interactions between some massless fermion, uh, Dirac fermion, uh, with uh, some massive with mass m real scalar phi, coupled together through this Yukawa interaction. And again, assuming that we are not powerful enough in our experiments to, to probe energy scales close to this, this, this mass here, what we can do is to integrate out the, the scalar field. And, and, and this provides for us some, some low energy effective field, field theory, effective Lagrangian, which typically consists in two pieces. One, one capturing the leading order dynamics, let's say, plus higher order, in, higher order and highly suppressed uh, operators. And uh, this, this low energy uh, effective description typically is very complicated. It includes a lot of terms. And, uh, and by, by, for example, studying the kind of, of uh, leading order terms that appear, what one realizes is that, of course, they, they, they depend on the UV uh, parameters, on the parameters of the UV completion. But they, they typically exhibit some interesting uh, dependence on those. So, for example, this one, which is uh, the, the leading for um, uh, for for fermion interaction, can be seen as arising simply by collapsing these kind of Feynman diagrams, in which the the very uh, massive uh, field uh, runs in, in inside the, the diagram. Now, if we start in the opposite direction, we are just given with this effective description. And by, by, by some means, we can tune the, the, the mass parameter, for example, of, of, 
of the heavy, heavy scalar. What one sees is that upon approaching this, this massless limit, the theory, of course, uh, becomes singular. But this is, not, this is not surprising. This is something that we understand. The idea is that, of course, uh, by taking this limit, what we have done is illegally integrated out some, some degree of freedom, which becomes massless. And uh, roughly speaking, massless particles can easily connect very far away points in, in a space time. Uh, this is nice, but it would be uh, nice, even nicer, if we could, uh, you know, phrase this, this same um, uh, description in some more realistic way, namely without having to, you know, impose by hand the values of the of the parameters of our of our, of our theory. And the most perhaps economic way to do this is by by supersymmetrizing our field theory. Uh, when we do so, uh, we find typically scalar potentials in which the minima are not, uh, not are typically not isolated, but they are there are many there are many of them which, which uh, can be parameterized sometimes continuously uh, by some uh, modulus field, uh, some flat direction. And again, if we only care about the the low energy degrees of freedom, what we can do is to integrate out everything that is massive. And uh, and and focus on the low energy effective description, which typically is captured by a nonlinear sigma model describing this, this model like this. To give you uh, some, some example, and in order to show uh, similar behavior as, as the one we, we were discussing below, let's take some simple n equals one setup in which we have two chiral multiplets, so each of them has two, two, two uh, complex scalars together with a bifermion with a canonical chiral potential, namely they, they have a trivial kinetic terms. But they, of course, interact through this superpotential here, which couples the two of them. So if we, if we want to, see, to, to find the, the back of our theory, we look at the vacuum equations. And it's not, it's not very difficult to realize that actually uh, those, uh, arise, those, those, those equations enforce us to sit on, on, on a bed for the, for the five field equal to zero, but they don't restrict at all the, the value of, of, of the scalar component of, of our set, uh, super field. So it parameterizes indeed uh, some flat direction. And actually, whenever we see it generically in some, in some point of this modular space in which we give an unvanishing back in expectation value to set, um, what one finds is that the other chiral multiplet, which is phi, becomes massive with a mass which is proportional to this, to this uh, vacuum expectation value. So again, if we only care about the lower energy uh, and the use of freedom, what we can do is to integrate the, the chiral, the chiral phi, uh, field phi out and see what is the, the, the theory we're left with. And, um, and what we are left with is with uh, a theory describing the, the, the just uh, this, this, this moduli, this, the moduli set, without any kind of superpotential generated perturbatively. But uh, one finds, well, certain non trivial corrections to the current potential. So we no longer have. Uh, canonical kinetic terms for sure. And indeed, this is, this is, these are the, the, the kind of, of correct logarithmic corrections that appear at, at one loop. And interestingly, again, if we look, uh, we can look for special points in our model X space. And one finds that there's this one, the, the region in which once, once again, the, the, the kinetic terms blow up. So we find some kind of uh, singular pathology. But of course, we understand this. What is happening? Well, at this point, the, the chiral multiplet phi, which we already integrated out, becomes massless. So it is it is it is it is it that, that is inducing the, the singularity in our in our theory. And all these uh, these these two examples that, that, that I've that I've shown you, all this was just to 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 tell you that the take home message that one can one can get is that of course any time that we find this kind of singularities in our effective field theory, what we should expect is to also find some emerging uh, new massless degrees of freedom showing up. In our theory, which we either forgot or we already integrated out. So far, so good. But this is for quantum field theory. And you may ask, well, but uh, does this happen also for, for quantum gravity? And, in, and, in, and if it does, how, how does this happen? And uh, you know, in, in order to illustrate how uh, this, this actually happens, because this is, uh, this is something that is known, I will, I will discuss a very simple and familiar example, that of the conifold. So imagine that we take type to be string theory. And we compactify on a Calabrian triple. This leaves us with an effective four dimensional theory with eight supercharges, 40 n equals. This theory has the nice feature that it has two sectors, which are the couple at the two derivative level. And for the purposes of what, what, I'm, what I want to tell you, uh, it's, it's enough to just focus on the, on the piece that con contains the vertex, the U1. 
And apart from this, this bunch of U1s, what we also have are uh, some neutral scalars, the complex structure mode is, uh, of, of our theory, which um, parameterize the shape and size of our compact internal manifold. This is something that we know. In particular, they parameterize the sizes of certain uh, minimal free cycles uh, with different topologies, for example, free spheres or whatever, uh, inside our compact uh, internal space. And a nice feature about this, this theory is that the metric uh, of the model space and also the gauge kinetic function is determined uh, already at the classical level. So there's no further quantum corrections, a stringy or a, a prime or whatever, which, uh, which uh, further modifies it. So this is fine. Now, you may ask, okay, but in this, can we find any, any sort of singularity as the ones that I was uh, talking to you about within this model space? And indeed we can. And the, perhaps the simplest one is that of the conical. So this singularity arises whenever uh, some three cycle of our of our Calabi-Yau is written to zero size. For example, the one associated to set one. And um, by looking at the metric, one can check that the, that the upon sitting in this precisely in this point, it develops a logarithmic singularity. So when set goes to zero, the, the, the volume of the three cycle goes to zero, we find again some singular behavior. But the point of, of, of not having any further corrections is dangerous, potentially dangerous, because in principle, there's the, either, you, either you make sense of this or, or your, your theory is indeed a, a pathological, right? Um, but I mean, by, by thinking about the, the default theorem that I was telling you about, that, that of saying that every time we have find some singularity, we more or less expect the emergence of new massless degrees of freedom one, one could say that perhaps one has to look for, for some new states, which uh, we, we've already integrated out or we forgot, uh, whose masses are actually controlled by, the, by, by these scalars, by this complex structure model space. And this is what, what, uh, what Strominger realized. Actually, it is, it is easy to construct these states, which are non-perturbative in type 2 string theory, by taking DT brains and wrapping them along three cycles of your internal geometry. These, for the, from the four-dimensional perspective, are, are point like objects, black holes, VPS black holes whose masses are controlled uh, by the, the volume of the three cycle they, they wrap. But if we choose this, this DT brain to wrap precisely the cycle that shrinks as uh, asymptotes to zero upon uh, getting close to the conifold point. So in principle, one, one may think that perhaps by integrating this guy out on one loop, it is possible to reproduce the same logarithmic uh, singularity that was found in the lower energy description. This is indeed what Strominger did uh, and matched perfectly. Uh, which is very, very nice. But all these examples, both in quantum field theory and in quantum gravity that I, that I, that I um, talked about so far, are infinite distance singularities. And in the Swamland program, we typically care more uh, about the infinite distance ones uh, because they are intrinsically gravitational, so to say. Uh, so the question that naturally arises is whether we can actually reinterpret these this singularities along the same line. And this is the content of the emergence proposal, at least in its uh, weakest version. And in order to show how this works, I will again choose uh, a simple example, that of Kalusa clean compactification that we all know and love, uh, in order to, to see how this, this, this kind of logic works in this, in this more uh, quantum gravitational setup, let's say. So uh, take your favorite effective field theory coupled to gravity with some matter, compactify in a circle, and we know what, what we are left with. We, we, the, 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 the low energy effective field theory containing only the massless degrees of freedom, uh, uh, it's comprised by the graviton, the calusa klein photon, and some scalar parameterizing the, the size of the, of, this, of the circle. Within this moduli space, it's easy to see that there are two uh, singularities, which are actually the canonical examples of infinite distance singularities that we, that we talked about. Uh, the one of large radius and the one of small radius. And if we have some string theory embedding in, in the back of our minds, we already know what, what these, these singularities are signaling to. They, they point towards some, the compactification, uh, possibly to a dual frame, in which some, some extra, the extra dimension, the circle, grows large. Again, by invoking our folk theorem, uh, every time that we have find some, some, infinite, some singularity uh, in our effective description, we should also find an infinite no well, a, a number of, of guys which become massless upon approaching the, the, this point. In this case, we know what, what these guys are. They are the galusa clean replica or the winding modes of our, of our string, whose, whose, whose mass is actually controlled by, by, the, by the modulus. 
So the question is uh, whether, in the same in the same sense as the as the Gonifold was analyzed or the examples in quantum theory, whether we could understand this singular behavior both for the for the gauge coupling, the gauge field function of the KK photon, and the, the infinite distance arising in the in the metric, whether we could understand this phenomenon uh, by induce after integrating out this the, the infinite this time infinite number of guys. Of course, in order to do this, uh, one requires from an, uh, a rather special cutoff, the, the species scale bound. And, but I, I won't have time to, to, to elaborate more on, on this, but just to stress that the, uh, in order to check whether this, this, this works, one has to impose as our, as our cutoff in our effective field theory coupled to gravity, precisely the, the, the species scale, which is the quantum gravity cutoff. So in order to give you a flavor of how this, this kind of computations go, what one does is, uh, well, one looks at the spectrum of, uh, of the states which are becoming massless, in this case, the, in this case, the Kalusakian replica, let's take for definiteness the tower to be made of fermions. One looks at the couplings that it has with respect to, the, to, the, to our low energy degrees of freedom, and one integrates out the, the whole tower up to the species scale. And after, well, inserting them in the, in the loops and computing what kind of, of uh, wave function renormalization in this case they, they produce, the details are not important, but what is important is that uh, at the end of the day, what one arrives at is uh, some, some moduli dependent uh, induced uh, metrics, both for the, for the moduli and for the, gate, for the gates field, which upon in, introducing or substituting the, 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 mass, uh, the mass associated to the tower, actually uh, matches up to order one factors to which we are not sensitive uh, in any case, precisely the behavior uh, exhibited by, the, by our effective field theory. Okay, so but uh, this is this you may argue that this is perhaps uh, too simple to be to be taken as, as seriously, but the, the whole point of, of the emergence proposal is to say to claim that this is actually universal. So every time you you find yourself in some effective field theory with couple to, to to Einstein gravity and you prove that your model is space so as to to reach some infinite distance boundary, the the singular behavior that, that you observe in your effective field theory uh, looks as if it was produced. By integrating out, integrating out the, the, the infinite tower of guys that should uh, become massless at the point. So it kind of reverges, reverses the logic of, for example, the distance window. Um, but before, before uh, talking briefly about some, one example that, that I wanted to, to, to show you, let me just, uh, just, just tell you something that I promised to you at the, at the beginning of the talk, which is that actually, if one takes this, this proposal seriously and analyzes the kind of um, with functional renormalizations or, or, or corrections that one obtains uh, by the kind of towers that typically appear in string theory, namely excitations of a critical string or a Kalosakian replica and so on and so forth, one can show that the metrics or the singularities that, uh, that appear, both for the metrics and the weak coupling points, are precisely those uh, um, required by the weak gravity or thumbland distance conjecture, which is something uh, very, very nice. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, this 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 Kalosakian example was too too easy to be taken perhaps seriously. So the idea would be okay to to try and, and go uh, to the into the wild and test this this idea in, in in every setup that you may you may find interesting. In the paper, this is what we did. Uh, we checked uh, thoroughly different examples in different dimensions with different amount of supersymmetry. Each of them uh, exhibiting some um, characteristic feature which was different uh, or which could give us some, some kind of insight into, into how this, this mechanism works in detail. So, so this is essentially the map of the, of the, first, of the, first, of the first papers I was telling you. But uh, due to time constraints, let me just focus on one simple example, go very briefly uh, uh, to it and, and, and see how, how this kind of realistic uh, Emergence computations go. So imagine that we take M theory and we compactify on I, on a high surface. What we obtain it's a low energy seven dimensional effective theory, supersymmetric effective theory, with a bunch of uh, super multiplets. In particular, what interests us in this in this example is the vector multiplet model aspect. These vectors arise by you know, reducing the 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 eleven D three form along harmonic two forms uh, of the internal manifold. And one can see that the, the gauge kinetic function that one, one obtains at low energies is actually moduli dependent and it's very constrained by, by the amount of supersymmetry that we have in this theory. 
And interestingly, one can probe this, this model space. This is what these, these people did. Uh, and one can find interest in infinite distance points, which are also uh, more uh, at the same time with coupling points for the, for the gauge fields, for some gauge fields at least. And there is one which is particularly interesting. This is the one analyzed in this paper here a couple of years ago, in which the K3 asymptotically exhibits some kind of vibration, elliptic vibration, in which the fiber shrinks to zero size, whilst the base blows up at the same rate, so as to keep the, the overall volume constant and not the coupling uh, gravity in the seven dimensional uh, setup. This, this, uh, in this, precisely in this particular point, one can see that the, the singularity is, uh, behaves in a very, in a very concrete way. It blows up with this, uh, uh, let's say, infinite distance parameter t, in a in a quadratic way. And then, uh, if you want to check emergence, you would say, okay, uh, now I have to 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 find my infinite tower of states, find their the masses and couplings, and uh, try to see whether I can reproduce this this behavior by uh, by integrating them out. And this is precisely what happens. So in this case, the the infinite tower is given by m two brains. Uh, wrapped around the, the two cycles of your internal manifold. Precisely, uh, the ones that become masses are the ones that, uh, that uh, wrap n times along the fiber, the, the torus fiber. This, this provides you for, for infinite tower of, of states whose mass in Planck units uh, decreases asymptotically. And by using the general uh, formula or, or by integrating them out at uh, one loop, one can see that the the this this behavior both for the gauge kinetic coupling, which is the one that I'm showing, but also for the for the modular space metric, is is um, is reproduced up to order one factors again because we are not sensitive to them. So uh, I don't know how much time do I have, uh, but uh, you have about five minutes. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I was I was faster than I thought. Anyways, <laughs> that's okay. So, too. Don't worry. So the 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 as a summary, let me let me just recap like the the things that we we discussed uh, in this in this talk. The, the 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 three main messages that I wanted to convey were first that uh, the familiar phenomenon of uh, singularity is going hand in hand with with emergence of new massless degrees of freedom is is something which we are we are familiar with even from our quantum field theory experience. That is also something that happens in quantum gravity, not only in the conical example that, that I was, I was uh, reviewing before, but also in other instances in which one can see how this, uh, from this field, the field theory perspective, uh, different changes in the, ge in the internal geometry or the internal topology uh, uh, arise. And, uh, and, uh, and the third message, message was to, once we, we kind of uh, digest this, this fault theorem, uh, try to see whether these the, the infinite distance singularities, which are commonplace in, 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 in the Swamland program, in quantum gravity in general, whether these could be reinterpreted along the same lines, similarly as, as we did for the for the conic. Of course, these this, this singularities are, are more interesting because they, they typically signal towards some kind of some some more more, more dramatic gravitational phase transition, so to say, in which some we, we change to, to, to some duality frame or we decompactify some big extra dimension and so on and so forth. Uh, in the paper, I mean, here I only had time to, to discuss very briefly the, the main ideas which are behind this, this, this proposal. Some of them were already known uh, um, a couple of years ago when, when, when this, this, this idea was first um, proposed. But some others uh, were are, are new or are new insights which come from actually systematically studying the, the, the emergence in different setups in different dimensions and with different amount of or supersymmetry or different kind of uh, infinite distance limits. And oh, I mean, there, there are also other things that one can study and that we did a study, which which is not only the emergence of kinetic terms or, kin or singularities shown in the in the in the kinetic functions in the metrics of our low energy the use of freedom, but also uh, certain, certain potentials. That in, in this case, the, the, the flux potentials, but uh, this, that, that's something that's probably a, a topic for another talk. So and anyways, I encourage you to have a look at the paper and uh, let's just go for the, for the questions. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Alberto, for this interesting talk. Um, so while we wait for questions, oh, sorry, there's already questions, but please. 
Thomas. Yeah, thanks for a, for a nice and a pedagogical talk. Um, I was just curious to know, um, how can you relate the generation of the form of kinetic terms to the creation of scalar potential? So, so how, how can you link this to the anti de Sitter uh, conjecture? So, so thank you very much for your question. So indeed, uh, actually this was the kind of the, the motive yeah. in which, uh, because of which we started to, to look at this, this emergence proposal. The idea was that, well, as, as it's now known from a couple of years ago, uh, typically, the flux potential, for example, thinking about the, the 4D flux potential of that two effort uh, compactifications, uh, one can typically relate, uh, rewrite this potential in terms of non dynamical three forms. So, the idea is that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, what you could try to generate in this case is the kinetic terms for the, for the non dynamical fields along the same, the, the same lines as you do, for example, for, I don't know, the wave function normalization of the photon or, or things like that. Of course, you need the, uh, more intricate uh, tower of states coupling to these guys, but uh, in principle and surprisingly enough, uh, typically it's it's just uh, sufficient to have gravitinos uh, and towers of KK of replica of gravitini, which couple very naturally to these guys. And when you when you run the same argument, you find precise agreement with the same the same with well with the with the uh, singular behavior exhibited by this flux potential. We study, for example, two cases, the M-theory flux potential compactify on a, on a, on a threefold with G4 flux and also the type 2A flux potential. And at least for the limits that we study and with the algorithm that we, what, that we propose with its simplifications, it kind of matches very, very well. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Timo. Hello, thank you very much for this very nice and clear talk. Um, I have a conceptual question concerning the form of the emergence conjecture, because to my understanding, there's a strong form and a weak form. So if you could you could say that like this, the strong form would say that really all kinetic terms, all dynamics as such comes from integrating out towers versus the weak form. I mean, maybe there are different authors defining differently, but I would say the weak form could be formulated as saying that the towers contribute to the couplings, um, like for example, by, loop, by loops. And in particular, the, the Kalusa-Klein example is one where I think only the weak form is realized, right? Because you do have a tree level contribution to say your KK U1 gauge coupling, but also a one loop contribution, they're both of the same order. So what would you say from your further computation? Do you have a, a, any, any more insights or um, could you comment a bit more on this? Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you very much for, for a very nice. That's a, that's a very good question. So um, indeed, there's, there are two versions. Uh, actually, I mean, on a technical level, when you try to check whether one has one or the other, it's 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 very difficult because all these computations are 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 not sensitive to order one factors. In the case of the of the conifold, for example, which is similar in speed, because you would say that this singularity already arises at the tree level, but at the end of the day, it's induced at the quantum level by the by the by the non perturbative black holes. You, there you can check, uh, you can reproduce exactly the, the, the order one factor, and then you can claim that the, this is fully generated, so to say, by, by your, your mass, new massless degree of freedom. In our infinite distance limits, uh, you cannot do that. So you're never sure about the, whether the boundary condition is to set the metric, the UV metric to zero or not. But, it's, but having said so, there are some, some Examples, particular examples in we, which provide for, let's say, nice insight about how how this could be resolved. I mean, there I, I'm thinking about uh, F-theory limits, as a, such such as the one that, that I was commenting on, or the, the M-theory on a K-theory that you that you studied. Uh, there's there's another avatar when you where you compactify M-theory in the Calabio trifold, take the F-theory limit, and there are certain um, terms in your five-dimensional effective field theory which you cannot get. A tree level from com com compactification of the F theory uh, model on the same elliptic threefold down to the 5D theory. They only arise, they arise, I mean, uh, completely through one loop computation. So, I mean, I, I, I cannot say that this is what, what happens always, but it's true that in some examples, you can actually see that the, the, the singularity is fully generated by the tower. In others, you just don't know, you don't have uh, enough power, I would say, uh, up to now. 
But in other examples, I mean, for example, you, you, you could do this KK computation in, in full string theory in situations where you, where you really have a string theory compactified on a, on a circle, say perturbative heterotic, say on a circle. And I think there one can show that the, that the um, I mean, it, it's not the example that you showed, but um, uh, that the uh, KK um, one loop and tree level term are just the same. They are, I think, precisely one half contribution to the, to the full result. And okay, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this example. I mean, you could... mm -hmm. So you, you, you say that the, in particular, in specific examples, you can prove that the it's demo, democratically given by the three level piece and the, and the yeah. contribution. I mean, when you have a perturbative string theory where you can actually do the computation, so that you have a partition function and so on, with lots of supersymmetry, of course. Um, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I think. This is a morally morally the same. So some some things depending on your duality frame are classical or, or quantum generated, right? So I, I I won't say I won't claim that the this predicts always that everything has to be generated at the at the quantum level or, or at least induced by this by the by the KK or by the infinite tower of state. But at least it's it's interesting that the, to some extent it gives contribution which are. To say the least, of the same order of, of the three level of the three level piece. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think uh, the time is over. So why don't we thank Alberto and also Alessandro again for their talk?